Hi, I'm Ann McKinnell. Thanks for joining me. In this tutorial, I'll be discussing dodging and burning, what they are, and how you can do it in Lightroom and Luminar. To understand what these tools are and where the terminology came from, I'd like to demonstrate how we used to do this back in the darkroom days. So I want to explain how dodging and burning worked in the old darkroom days to help you understand where these terms came from and what they mean. So say this is my darkroom, this is my piece of photographic paper, and when I made my print I would turn on my enlarger for a predetermined period of time, say 10 seconds or so, and then the light would go out and the whole paper has been exposed to the light for the exact same amount of time. So, say there was a portion of the image that I wanted to be lighter than it is. What I would do is use a tool that we called a dodge tool, and it was typically a stick with a piece of round cardboard on the end of it. I'm going to use this spoon as my example. So what we would do is turn the light on, let the light hit the whole paper for a little while, and then I would come in with my spoon and go like this over the area that I wanted to be a little bit lighter, actually dodging the light from this part. And I shake the spoon like this to feather the edge. And we'll talk about feathering when we talk about the digital darkroom. And then the light goes off. And so this area of the photograph of the print has received less light than the rest of it. Similarly, if that area we wanted to be darker than it is, I would cut out the part of the image that I wanted to be darker. So typically I would have one print that didn't work out and I would literally just cut out the spot that I wanted to be darker. And I would do a very similar thing. The light goes on, I go like this and I shake it, and the light that goes through the hole is burning the paper below it with more light and then the light goes out. Okay, I hope that helps to explain why we call this dodging and burning. But essentially, dodging is used to lighten a portion of your image, and burning is used to darken a portion of your image. So let's take a look at how we would do this in the digital darkroom. So there are a few different ways that you can affect the light and the dark tones in your image, and you're probably already familiar with some of these. The first is contrast. So if I just uh, go ahead and increase the contrast here, the darks get darker and the lights get lighter. Now what I want to do with this image, with this dodging and burning, is to lighten this area of the bridge in the foreground here, and maybe even lighten along this side here. And that way it will draw the viewer's eye into the frame towards the castle. Okay, so notice that when I use the contrast slider, um, that particular part of the frame actually gets darker because it's considered a shadow in this image. So another way that you can affect the highlights and the shadows is by using the highlights and shadows sliders. But you'll notice that when I use the highlight slider, again, it affects the highlights, but it doesn't affect this portion of the image because that is considered a darker tone. So using those particular sliders isn't giving me the effect that I'm hoping to achieve. So what I'm going to do is use an adjustment brush and I'm going to use the exposure slider on my adjustment brush to do my dodging and burning. So the first thing I want to do is dodge or lighten, which is the same thing as increasing the exposure. But the increase in exposure is only going to happen where I paint this adjustment brush. Okay, so I have the size of the brush here set at about 10 and I have a feather of around 70. Now the feather, let me just move this into the top right corner here so you can see my brush. The feather is the area between the two circles where this effect is going to fade out so there isn't a harsh line. So we have a bit of a feather here. Oh, no, we wanted that to be, let's call it 70. That looks good. And I have a flow and density of about 80, so it isn't 
full on 100% here. So what I can do now is just paint on where I want this lightning effect to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint this into the foreground. Paint it on there. And I can check this box here that says show selected mask overlay so I can see exactly where I've painted. Okay. Now I think I might do a little bit more up here and a little bit along this edge of the, uh, the wall of the bridge as well. Now if I also want to do some burning while I'm here, I can select new to get a new adjustment brush and I'll decrease the exposure. And I think what I'll do now is paint a little bit on this hill in the background and make it a little bit darker. So I can just go ahead like this Okay, like that. Okay, so if I want to see what the result of my dodging and burning is here, I can use this uh, light switch tool to turn off my adjustment brush and then turn it back on again. See, you can see how this has added a, a, a dynamic sense to this image, the higher contrast that leads your eye up towards the castle. Okay, so I actually prefer to do this in Luminar than in Lightroom, and I'll show you why. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go back to the library here, and, um, oops, okay. And um, what I'm going to do is make a virtual copy of this. Okay, so there's my virtual copy. And I'm going to go and just uh, remove those changes with my adjustment brush. So I can go here and delete this one and delete that one. So we're back with how the image looked before I made any changes in Lightroom. And now what I'm going to do is open this in Luminar. So I'll go Photo, Edit in Luminar. And I want to edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments. All right, so here's the photo in Luminar. So what I'm going to do is go add filters and I will pick dodge and burn. Here it is here, okay. And now I'm going to do a very similar thing. You can just pick this button here that says start painting, okay. And you have two choices. You can lighten and darken. So I'm going to start with lighten. And let's see how big is my brush here. I'll make the size of my brush a little bit smaller. Oh, maybe a little bigger than that. Okay, that looks good. And strength at about 50%. That's probably good. I don't want to go too much here. How about that? Okay. So I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm just going to start painting where I want this lighting effect to be. And I think I'll just do a little bit along the edge of this wall like we did last time. Okay, so this has turned out to be a bit more than what I wanted, but we can deal with that a little bit later. What I'm going to do first is do my darkening. So I want to pick darken and I'll do the same thing with painting uh, onto this hill in the background. And I'm going to want that to be a little bit more than my intention as well. So we can turn the whole thing down by the same amount. Okay. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is over here in the dodge and burn amount, I can just turn this down. So I can just tone that down a little bit from what I originally did. Even more. Okay. And so now I can use this eyeball icon here to turn the effect off and back on again. Okay. So I'm going to show you here why I prefer to do this in Luminar. So what I want you to look at right now in Luminar is in this 
uh, foreground portion of the frame. Notice the detail. Okay, I'm going to switch to Lightroom. So this is the version that we did in Lightroom. And if you look at that same area, you'll notice that it doesn't have the same detail that we have in the version that we did in Luminar. I don't know why it's like that, but I've noticed that this technique just seems to work out better when I do it in Luminar. Let's look at it a bit closer so we can see that detail better. I'm just going to close this adjustment brush and let me open this side panel here and I'll go one to one. So we're looking at 100% and I'll just drag this down to the foreground portion of this bridge. Okay, so notice the amount of detail. Oh, that just got blurry on me. Hold on, it's rendering. Okay, so now notice the amount of detail here and I'll switch back over to Luminar and let's take a look at this at 100% and I'll go down to that same area and it's rendering. Okay, so see the detail here and then let me switch back to Lightroom and you'll see that the Lightroom version just doesn't have the detail that I'm getting in the Luminar version. So that's why I prefer to do this entire technique in Luminar. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of dodging and burning. It's a great way to make sure the effect that you're trying to achieve is applied exactly to the areas where you want it to happen in your image. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.